Beth from the channel Try Thinking is proposing an experiment to show whether there is a curve or not. In one of his latest hangouts, Mr. Sensible had a discussion with Bev, in which Mr. Sensible tried, in vain, for over two hours to explain to Bev how horizontal and level work in a spherical Earth model. In vain, because Bev stubbornly kept up to his own definition of these terms, including his repeatedly mentioning perpendicular, horizontal, vertical, plumb line, level and Euclidean geometry, although he seemed not to understand any of these terms when dealing with the sp spherical Earth model. To illustrate what I mean, I show some clips from this debate. What the hell is level? Yeah. So what? how would you define level? Horizontal. And and you said you're very a, simply a surveyor. Did you say I have done have done yeah, surveying. I have done surveying. Yes, because yeah, I did a bit. I did a bit of digging. Horizontal plane through a point is a plane tangential to the level surface at that point. It is therefore perpendicular to the plumb line through the point. I don't think you would disagree with that if you dropped the plumb plumb line. Well, to get I don't know where, where's where's tangential, right? Because that that's sort of saying that. A uh, horizontal plane through a point is a plane tangential to the level surface. So would that mean, what would that mean to you? With uh, the point that is therefore perpendicular to, I mean, I understand that horizontal is definitely perpendicular to the plumb line. Yes. Yeah. Through the point. Okay. We, yeah. I, I'm ha happy to uh, uh, agree that. Yeah. You drop a plumb line, you take uh, the perpendicular to that to give you the horizontal plane and any line along that plane is a straight line that is okay. also perpendicular to the plumb line isn't it yeah right so how how would you imagine that you would establish that horizontal let's say the tool to establish that plumb line is called a plumb bob yep and you've seen a plumb bob yes indeed um it's it's weight on a piece of string Yes, so yes. that's the tool for establishing a vertical. Yep. What is the tool that establishes the horizontal? I don't know what tool as a surveyor a surveyor uses. Well, it, but they, I know they use a it, tool to establish ninety degrees perpendicular to that vertical to that plumb bob line. Yeah, we would call that tool a level. Okay. Okay. Now, that level is horizontal right it's a tool for establishing a horizontal plane yes of reference. It's, it's a tool for, uh, i can i can exceed to that that establishes your horizontal plane yes okay so when that line that you've just read out said that um a horizontal uh plane through a point is a plane tangential to the level surface ah so well, that okay the yes. horizontal plane is the level surface so what's the What's the tangent bit there in that thing, do you reckon? Well, it's because a level surface, let me go up a bit further on up there. A level surface is defined as a curved surface, which at each point is perpendicular to the direction of gravity at that point. The surface of still water is a truly level surface. Any surface parallel to the mean spheroidal surface of the Earth therefore is a level surface so basically you've got your plumb bob you take 90 degrees and if you looked along mm -hmm. that 90 degrees that horizontal you are looking along the horizontal you step forward a step took another vertical another plumb bob you would have a new and different horizontal <laughs> it would intersect with your first one it would be very close to the first one but it would not be identical to the first one ah okay I can see where I think you might be uh, uh, struggling. Well, I'm not struggling. Um, uh, and there's, okay, a, well, there's but, a, a, a cheapo diagram just going to come up as well. Yeah, OK. Well, which geometry are you using? What do you mean? What do you mean? I, um, you do understand what geometry means. Did we, did yeah, we tell you this the other day? We are looking 
at su- surveyors' websites here. Yes. Yeah. 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 And but we're talking I mean, like, about use, the shape of like the. I say, Earth. like you use your use your brain and use your logic here, right? But don't be looking at pictures like that. Well, that is explaining because they what, may they uh, may influence you. I think you you would be a different vertical. So yes, would yes, it have it would a be different, a different vertical. Yeah. And what would you measure that angular difference of that vertical from? Well, you'd use a plumb bob again. Anywhere around that sphere, okay, the so plumb bob would, would always point down. Plumb... Oh, right. So it would always be vertical. So you'd yes. never be able to measure a deviation of a vertical. Well, actually, Because the... your frame of reference would actually be vertical. So... You, you would never be able to tell a difference, would you? I'm not quite sure what you mean about that, but uh, if I still... Well, how would, you, how would you measure an angular difference between two verticals? In a discussion at McToon's channel between Bev and George Nyatyuk, later on, Bev showed again that he doesn't understand simple geometry. Now, let's simplify this whole matter. We use only Euclidean geometry and basic trig- trigonometry and we will use the terms that Bev loves so, de- so dearly. Perpendicular, horizontal, vertical, plumb line and level as much as possible. There are two models that could be considered. The earth is flat or the earth is a sphere. I know that Bev doesn't want to be called a flurfer, but consistently shouting that horizontal means a flat horizontal plane and that no one can convince him that it could be different implies that the earth cannot have another shape than flat. We'll deal with each model with the tools that are available within that model. And we'll deal with each model as a two-dimensional model. This simplifies the metal considerably and we cannot be accused of using anything other than Euclidean geometry. Let's also treat the models as hypotheses. First we consider a flat earth. The surface of a flat plane can be depicted in two dimensions as a straight line. When we hang a plumb line above this plane it is hanging straight down and this direction we call vertical. Perpendicular to this direction we can draw a second line. The direction of this line we call horizontal or level. Now we hang a second plumb line at some distance of the first. The direction of this line also is vertical. A line perpendicular to this line is a second horizontal line. Since both plumb lines are parallel, both horizontal lines are also parallel. Or better, both horizontal lines are coinciding. We now can formulate our hypothesis. When the Earth is flat, the direction of two plumb lines at some distance from each other must be parallel. Now we consider a spherical Earth. The surface of a sphere can be depicted in two dimensions as a curved line, which given the scale of the real Earth, cannot be depicted to real scale. The curve, therefore, is exaggerated. When we hang a plumb line above this curved line, it is, due to gravity, hanging straight to local down. This is in the direction of the center of mass, which is the center of the curve, and the direction we call vertical. Perpendicular to this direction, we can draw a second line. The direction of this line we call horizontal or level. Now we hang a second plumb line at some distance of the first. The direction of this line also is in the direction of the center of the curve and this direction we also call vertical. A line perpendicular to this line is a second horizontal line. We can see that these horizontal lines do not coincide, they cross. We now can formulate our hypothesis. When the Earth is a sphere, 
the direction of two plumb lines at some distance from each other cannot be parallel. How can we test the validity of these hypotheses? We can do that by measuring the reciprocal zenith angles. The procedure is as follows. If the Earth is flat, we get this diagram. We place an observer at one location with a total station. This is a surveying instrument that can measure angles to a high level of accuracy. The instrument is placed in such a way that you are looking through it in a horizontal line, that is, a line perpendicular to the plumb line, the local vertical. Then we place a second observer at some distance, also with the total station, which also is placed in such a way that you are looking through it in a horizontal line, that is a line perpendicular to the plumb line, the local vertical. When both observers are at the same elevation, their line of sight is also horizontal. Both observers measure their zenith angle, that is the angle between the line vertical up and the horizontal line of sight. Both will measure an angle of 90 degrees. The sum of both angles will be 180 degrees. When the observers are at a different elevation, their line of sight will not coincide with the horizontal and both measure, measured angles will not be 90 degrees. However, the sum of the angles still will always be 180 degrees. <coughs> if the Earth is a sphere, again we place an observer at one location, again with the total station placed in such a way that you are looking through it in a horizontal line that is a line perpendicular to the plumb line, the vertical. Then a second observer at some distance, also with the total station placed in such a way that you are looking through it in a, hor in a horizontal line that is a line perpendicular to the plumb line, the vertical. When both observers are at the same elevation, their line of sight will not coincide with one of the local horizontals. Both observers measure their zenith angle. The sum of both angles will be larger than 180 degrees. In this case, it makes no difference when the observers are at, different, at a different elevation. The sum of the angles will always be larger than 180 degrees. When you count in atmospheric refraction, the light will be bent downwards under normal atmospheric conditions. The straight line of sight will be curved. Taking refraction into account will result in the angles being measured slightly smaller than without refraction. This will be in favor of the flat earth model. Now we can derive our definitive hypothesis. When two observers measure, at some distance from each other, reciprocal zenith angles that add up to 180 degrees, the Earth's surface must be flat. If the observers measure reciprocal zenith in angles that add up to a number larger than 180 degrees, then the Earth's surface cannot be flat, but must be curved, convex in form. The difference between the measured angles and 180 degrees should be around 1 degree per 111 kilometers if the Earth is spherical with a circumference of around 40,000 kilometers. Now it happens that these reciprocal zenith measurements are performed regularly everywhere in the world. The results of a series of these measurements is presented here. They are made by Charlie Glover, a certified geodetic surveyor, and published by Jesse Kozlowski, also a certified geodetic surveyor. Let's look at one of the results, shall we? Let's zoom in on the important part. Here you see in the first column the number of the observation point from which the observation was made to the observation point mentioned in the third column. The second row gives the observation points from the reciprocal observation. 
In the fifth column, we see the measured zenith angle, and in the sixth column, the sum of both measure measurements. Note that all values in this column are greater than 180 degrees. This result is scored at all of the measurements reported. In the ninth column, we see the distance between the observation points. The results show also that the value is greater the greater the distance between the two observers. So we can derive the deviation from 180 degrees per 111 meters. The first observation gives a difference of 15 minutes, 53 seconds over a distance of 32.139 kilometers. This results in 0.914 degrees per 111 kilometers. The numbers for the other observations are respectively 0 0.904, 0 0.892, 0 0.887, 0 0.883, 0 0.888 and 0 0.884 degrees per 111 kilometers. All these numbers are around 10% less than the 1 degree per 111 kilometers we would expect on a spherical Earth with a circumference of 40,000 kilometers. The difference of 10% could be expected when some refractions would be considered. This validates the second part of our hypothesis and falsifies the first part. The Earth's surface cannot be flat. It must be curved in a convex form. It also confirms that horizontal and vertical must be local properties. They are not the same at every place on the Earth. As Beth stubbornly keeps repeating. And to top it off, it also confirms that the reciprocal zenith measurement comes out slightly less than 1 degree per 111 kilometers, confirming the circumference of the Earth at around 40,000 kilometers when considering some atmospheric refraction. This all is rather simple Euclidean geometry and third grade trigonometry. So Beth should understand it all, although I doubt that he does. It probably won't deter him from repeating his nonsense all over again. His channel name is Try Thinking. He should take that advice himself.